Few PC gaming genres compare to the incredible variety found in role-playing games. The RPG genre on PC is just as deep, if not deeper, than what you find on consoles like the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, or Xbox Series S X. There is a huge RPG library on Steam, which makes this video essential for you. Monster Hunter World is one of the best games in the Monster Hunter franchise, re-imaging the series with an emphasis on fluid combat and accessibility. Choose from one of 14 unique weapon types, from a giant axe that can transform into a sword to a lance that fires explosive rounds, then hunt the massive monsters of the new world. The core gameplay loop is as satisfying as ever. Hunt monsters to obtain their materials, use those materials to craft and upgrade your equipment, and then take on even stronger monsters for their materials. Monster Hunter World's smooth combat and gameplay loop never gets old, allowing you to play for thousands of hours to craft the perfect armor set. Dragon Age Origins used to be in this spot. While it is still a good game, and many people prefer its combat in particular, I recently did a replay of the Dragon Age games, and in the light of 2022 it's clear that Origins has enough faults to be replaced, though it should still get plaudits for being at the vanguard of the return of the epic fantasy RPG. Inquisition's combat is toned down on the CRPG front, but it's still fun, and even the rangers have goofy powers, able to backflip while firing a volley of explosive arrows the length of a valley. In fact, the whole game is fun. The interpersonal love interest drama is turned up to 11, the story, a kind of standard go to X number of places to gather your forces and defeat evil sort of hero's journey, has a threat that crosses dimensions, and the world is distractingly beautiful. It's a sort of blend of discrete levels that are each an open world. A lot of people stumble when they start playing Inquisition because the first area is the Hinterlands, an uncommonly huge area. You're actually given the option to move on and explore other levels very quickly, but a lot of people feel the need to stay and clear the area, which can take a very, very long time. The Hinterlands is a beautiful level in its own right, but it's by no means as lovely as the layered forest at the Emerald Graves, or the midnight desert sands of the Hissing Wastes. And while it's less successful than, perhaps, something like Weird West or Divinity, Original Sin, Dragon Age, Inquisition does let you leave a mark on the world. Your actions can make people's lives better, or worse. You build a stronghold and watch it slowly become fixed, and can choose if you want to allow a field hospital on the grounds. But perhaps the banner feature are your companions. It's a hallmark of Bioware games that it gives you a gang of weirdos with different tastes and then tries to make you fall in love with them, and this bunch of weirdos is one of the most interesting. Outside of tabletop games, there are few RPGs that boast the liberating openness of Larian's humongous quest for godhood. If you think you should be able to do something, you probably can, even it's kidnapping a merchant by using a teleportation spell and then setting fire to him with his own blood. Almost every skill has some alternative and surprising use, sometimes more than one, whether you're in or out of combat. You can enjoy this game of madcap experimentation and tactical combat with up to three friends, to boot, and that's where things start to get really interesting because you're not forced to work together or even stay in the same part of the world. Indeed, there are plenty of reasons to work against each other. The player is always in the driving seat, and with four players, collisions are inevitable. Just remember, if you freeze your friends and then start poisoning them, at least apologize after. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is the final installment in CD Projekt Red's action RPG series. In Wild Hunt, Geralt of Rivia slays mythological monsters, collects bounties, and protects the Child of Destiny. Developer CD Projekt Red builds upon the preceding Witcher game by introducing a ridiculously large open world filled with evil of both the monster and human varieties. Witcher 3 also greatly improves the series' combat by streamlining alchemy and tightening crafting. The Wild Hunt's rich narrative, one of the best stories in video game history, drives the game's tragedy, folkloric horror, humor, and intrigue. Skyrim is a game of endless possibilities. Chances are, no two players have had the exact same experience in the game. While the main storyline is therein of decent quality, where you'll find the most enjoyment is in the vast number of things you can do in its world. Will you harness the power of the Dragonborn and save Skyrim from destruction? Will you become a vampire and serve Lord Harkon and the Volikr clan? Will you steal everyone's belongings and become the richest person on the continent? Or maybe you'll take a simpler approach and build a house, marry someone, and settle down with some children. If you add mods into the mix, you could feasibly play Skyrim forever. With so much variety, there's something for every type of player to do in Skyrim, making it an easy recommendation for any RPG fan. Developer Avalanche Software took a stab at the first big-budget Harry Potter game in a decade with Hogwarts Legacy, and created an engaging and surprisingly rich action RPG. 
the game offers an open-world spin on the beloved Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry that lets you create a magician and cast spells until your heart's content. Frame rate issues sully the experience in some areas, but Harry Potter fans won't want to miss this title if they can ignore series creator J.K. Rowling. I know some people might make noise about there being an Assassin's Creed game on this list, but frankly I think I've shown restraint. The AC games had a bit of a renaissance starting with 2017's Origins, overhauling a lot of the core design and making the series from then on sharper, harder, and more interesting. In the process, Ubi brought the RPG elements to the surface, and Valhalla is arguably the pinnacle of the series and its new direction. Valhalla takes place in England in Anglo-Saxon times. It's a very alive yet melancholic landscape, very season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, and provides a great backdrop for the story of a Viking raider staking a claim in England that we know must, eventually be doomed. The main story is an epic with betrayal, gods, monsters, and extremely mythical endgame DLC if you fancy it. Eivor, a big buff blonde warrior of whichever gender you prefer, is a charismatic protagonist whichever way you slice it although they do most of the slicing. Aside from the extreme meatiness of the combat, which is potentially the most violent the series has been, there are opportunities to turn the tide even further. As a raider you travel up and down the riverways in your boat with your trusty crew, and a cat, and raid as a team, choosing to go in all stealthy and disabled defenses or as a murderous axe shower. You can also choose dialogue options to make your personal Eva a bit more of a lovable rogue or a hard ass. You can level towards being a stealthy assassin, a brawler, or a long-ranged specialist, and the whole time you're building up your village Revensthorpe, trying to make a new home for you and your people. Despite its rocky launch, Cyberpunk 2077 is a fantastic RPG that has grown into its own. Wherever you go on your journey to become a Night City legend, you'll encounter memorable characters and engaging stories, along with great gameplay that gives you tons of options for each encounter. You can build your character however you want, whether you're wielding an entire arsenal of heavy weapons, fighting up close with the brutal Mantis Blades, or hacking enemies' brains from afar as a Netrunner, combat never gets stale. Night City is deep and engaging, and almost takes on a life of its own as you explore and make a name for yourself. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen may be an RPG, but it features action-driven gameplay not unlike Capcom's Devil May Cry and Monster Hunter series. It draws inspiration from classic fables and myths, setting the game in a world burdened with the return of a destructive red dragon. Dark Arisen's combat is flashy and engaging, and the open-world environments are rich with detail, but the quest-driven plot and sparse character development weaken what would otherwise be an interesting story. The RPG leveling stalls combat, as well, so you won't fight at your full potential until you've leveled your class sufficiently. These issues may turn off less patient players, but those hoping for a grand, long-lived adventure across an action-packed open world will find plenty to discover and enjoy. If you've rinsed Diablo 2 for every magical trinket and are looking for a modern fix, here is your game. Grim Dawn is a gritty, well-made action RPG with strong classes and a pretty world full of monsters to slay in their droves. It's the distant brooding son of Titan Quest, sharing some designers and mechanics with that fine 2006 Greek myth ARPG. Like its cousin, Grim Dawn lets you pick two classes and share your upgrade points between two skill trees. This hybrid progression system creates plenty of scope for theory crafting, and the skills are exciting to use, an essential prerequisite for games that rely so heavily on combat encounters. The story isn't bad either, for an ARPG. Don't expect twisting plots and decisions with consequences, this is very much a game about single-handedly destroying armies, but there is a neat faction reputation system that spawns harder mobs and villainous nemesis heroes as you become more hated by the criminals, cults and monsters that rule the wilderness. The local demons and warlords that terrorize each portion of the world are well sketched out in the scrolling text NPC dialogue and found journals. Ultimately, it's about the monster smashing and sweet loot, though, and Grim Dawn delivers on both effectively. It's a shame that Tyranny didn't have the budget to achieve its full potential. The game's exploration of evil is something spectacular that not many games attempt, which makes for something special. Tyranny's superb writing and compelling characters are what make it such a blast to play through. It may fail in some aspects but absolutely excels in others. Even a rushed ending can't take away from the sheer enjoyment players can have with this game. So, did you like the games I recommended? So leave your like, subscribe to the channel to follow me and activate the bell because I post a lot of videos on this channel and you can't miss it. Thank you very much for following me this far and until next time, bye.